Have you ever felt stuck in a cycle of trading your time and energy for money? This thought consumed me. Every family member from my grandparents to my siblings were all kneading dough, tossing pizzas and serving customers. Our lives were as intertwined as the cheese on our best-selling margarita. Our family pizzeria was more than just a business. It was a legacy, a lifeline, and a looming vulnerability. The cheerful banter and laughter that echoed through the house after a hard day's work masked the precariousness of our situation. If anything were to happen to the pizzeria, our collective livelihood would be left dangerously exposed. Every pizza served, every dollar earned, was a testament to our hard work, but also a reminder of the risk we bore. As I lay in bed, the weight of this reality pressed heavily on me. I was aware of our vulnerability, a stark contrast to the blissful oblivion of my family. My mentor, Mr. Eddie Lim's advice echoed in my mind, collect things that make money. It was advice that seemed so simple yet so elusive. But how do you start collecting assets when you have nothing to begin with? This question haunted me throughout the week. Each day that passed was an agonizing reminder of my struggle to break free from the cycle. The once-a-week sessions with Mr. Lim seemed like a lifeline, but they were seven long days apart. The subway ride to 57th Street the layers of security before reaching Mr. Lim's luxury Manhattan apartment, they were all steps on a journey towards understanding. But understanding what? How to collect things that make money? Or how to break free from the shackles of my current reality? The struggle was real, it was a tangible gnawing discomfort that refused to dissipate. And as another Tuesday rolled around I prepared myself for yet another lesson, another step towards freeing myself from the cycle. But how to collect things that make money when you have nothing to start with? The question, like a shadow, followed me into the bustling streets of Manhattan. Waiting for my weekly meeting with Mr. Eddie Lim feels like waiting for rain in a drought. His advice on collecting things that make money, something I have never considered before, is now my beacon in the night, my glimmer of hope. I am eager to delve deeper into this concept to unravel its mysteries with his guidance. The day comes around, another Tuesday another subway ride to the heart of Manhattan. The hustle and bustle of the city feels different now, bustling with unseen opportunities rather than just noise and chaos. I am on my way to Mr. Lim's towering luxury apartment, a stark contrast to my humble beginnings at the family pizzeria. Our sessions are not just about me learning from him, but him learning from me too. I am teaching him Italian, a language that is so closely tied to my heritage, my family, Today Mr. Lim has a new goal in mind, he is thinking about buying a villa in Italy, either in Positano or Capri. He asks for my opinion, my insight. Which is better. But I have to admit, I'm sorry sir, I have only been to Italy once, and that was to Naples to accompany my grandparents to the villages where they were born. I feel a pang of embarrassment. Here I am, teaching Italian to a man who has traveled to more places in Italy than I ever have. But he is quick to reassure me, no worries Robbie. You are still young. One day you'll visit all the places I've been. His words ignite a fire in me, a desire to break free from my current situation, to see the world, to live life on my own terms. The anticipation of the lesson ahead is electrifying. Little do I know, it is about to change my perspective forever. Now that I understand why he wants to learn Italian I am doubling my effort to make him fluent as soon as possible. The moment my language session is done, it's Mr. Lim's turn to teach me. I immediately admit to him the impossibility of his previous advice the one that has kept me awake all week. Sir, I say you told me to collect assets but it's impossible, I can't afford any asset. The words hang heavy in the air, like the raw and unfiltered truth they are. Mr. Lim looks at me his gaze steady and unblinking. He doesn't seem surprised or disappointed. Instead he leans back in his chair studying me for a moment before he makes a rather peculiar request. Robbie, he says, lend me a buck. My eyebrows shoot up in surprise. The billionaire wants to borrow a dollar from me. Is he serious, I wonder? But seeing his unchanging expression, I reach into my wallet and pull out a single dollar bill. Put it on the table, face up, he instructs. I comply laying the dollar note flat on the polished surface. It seems so small, so insignificant, and yet, here we are focusing on this one solitary bill. Robbie, meet Mr. Washington, Mr. Lim says his voice filled with a certain reverence that makes me look at the dollar note in a new light. He is your most faithful friend, he will never betray you, he will never complain, he will work tirelessly for you, all you have to do is to hold on tight to him. I stare at the dollar bill, my mind reeling from the gravity of his words, it's so simple and yet, it's an idea that has never occurred to me before, 
A dollar isn't just a dollar, it's an asset, a friend, a stepping stone to freedom. I return my gaze to the dollar bill, viewing it with fresh eyes. It transforms from a simple piece of paper that affords me a soda or a bus ride into a tool, a silent laborer, a potential asset. I've had countless Mr. Washingtons pass through my hands, but I've never truly considered their potential beyond immediate gratification. You said you can't afford assets. That dollar note in your wallet is your asset, Mr. Lim asserts with confidence. It feels like he's unveiling a well-guarded secret, a key to a door I've been frantically attempting to open. I realize then that he isn't discussing the acquisition of grand, costly assets. He's highlighting the importance of starting small with what I already possess. The concept is simple, yet insightful. I don't need to pursue large investments or incur massive debts to start amassing assets. I can start with what I have, a single dollar, and slowly build from there. Astonishingly, I comprehend his advice in its entirety. Hope flickers within me for the first time. I have a beginning, a direction, and a mentor to guide me. The path to financial independence will undoubtedly be tough, but at least now, I possess a map. And it all commences with a single dollar, with my newfound friend, Mr. Washington. Today I learned a valuable lesson about asset accumulation and financial independence. The wisdom that was imparted to me was simple, yet profound. It's not about having a mountain of wealth to start with. It's about understanding the true value of every single dollar bill, seeing it as an asset, a silent partner that works tirelessly for me. Each dollar is a seed, a seed that can grow into a tree, a tree that can bear fruit and can provide continuously. It's not about how much I make but how much I hold on to and how hard I make those dollars work for me. The advice about collecting things that make money was not about amassing material possessions or expensive items. It was about acquiring assets, things that generate income and increase in value over time. It was about leveraging the power of money to create more money, breaking free from the cycle of trading time and energy for income. This realization was a game changer. It was a paradigm shift in my understanding of money and wealth. It was the key to financial independence. It was the answer to my doubts and struggles. It was my way out of the vulnerability of having everything tied to our family pizzeria. The advice was not just about money, it was about life. It was about taking control, making choices, and creating a future that is free from the constraints of trading time and energy for money. It was about understanding the power of money and using it to create a life of freedom and abundance. I see now that the journey to financial independence starts with a single step, a single dollar. It's not about the destination, it's about the journey, it's about the lessons learned, the experiences gained, and the growth achieved along the way. This journey is not just about me, it's about us. It's about our family, our community, and our future. It's about breaking free from the cycle of trading time and energy for money, and creating a life of abundance and freedom. If you've enjoyed this video and want to join me on this journey, remember to subscribe. Until next time, this is Robbie signing off.